We know there are many choices in Internet radio, and the staff and host of L.A. Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is L.A. Talk Live. We are more than just talk. The Dialogue. The Dialogue. The Dialogue, the community voice of Southern California's Young Professional Network. Relevant discussions about the thoughts, concerns, opportunities, and challenges faced by today's generational leaders. Real talk, real people. This is The Dialogue. The Dialogue. With Starlet Quarles on L.A. Talk Live and streaming live at www.latalklive.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome once again to the dialogue. Real talk, real people. I'm your host, Starter Course, and we're on live at latalklive.com and also streaming in Omaha, Nebraska at 1690 AM. The one, the voice of the voiceless. As always, the dialogue of the voice of our generation. So thank you so much for joining us here every Wednesday from 5 to 6, where we like to discuss the topics that are relevant for today's generation of leaders. Um, as you know, we are doing a two-month series on the dynamics of black relationships. We are tackling the topics of dating, marriage, sex, and black family. For the next two months, we just want to discuss how can we just all get along. Uh, so this is a 90-minute special, and we have a 30-minute call-in segment, but we definitely want to hear from you on this series of dynamics of today's black relationship so give us a call on our skype number 323-473-3100 that's 323-473-3100 uh we will be uh taking your call starting at 5 30 but we do have an additional 30 minutes uh, to our hour-long show so we're today we're here for an hour and a half so that last 30 minutes is just especially for our viewers of the dialogue again 323-473 3100. If you missed last week's show, we talked about stereotypes in today's black men. Our guests included entrepreneur Herman Sir Relevant Jones, screenwriter, author, and professor, and African American scholar Monique Matthews, who again is our sponsor. She's been here all month long. We're going to lose her today, it's her last day, but we are welcoming Monique Matthews back, author of Sex Free Community, activist Derek Steele, and educator Calista Watson, all last week to discuss. Uh, the stereotypes in today's black men. So if you missed it, just check out our replays at thedialoguela.com. That is thedialoguela.com. Now we're going to continue our theme of stereotypes today, and we're going to talk about stereotypes in today's black women. When you think about black women, what stereotypes come to mind? What thoughts come to your mind when you think about black women? Well, we're going to talk about them, whether they're good or bad. We're going to talk about stereotypes in today's black women. Our guests include filmmaker and activist Tim Alexander, entrepreneur Dallas Fowler, again Monique Matthews, and writer-director Michael Norville, all here to discuss the dynamics of black relationships, specifically stereotypes in today's black women. Again, give us a call. The show is a community conversation. The series is a community conversation. 323-473-3100. 323-473-3100. Or you can always send us your comments or questions to our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash the dialogue LA or tweet me at star quar again. Um, or if you have a number, you can text me. Uh, today's show and this month long series is brought to you by Monique Matthews book, Sex Free and Not So Modern approach to dating and relationships so make sure you pick up monique's book on amazon.com or on her website sexfreebook.com now we're going to take a quick commercial break and when we come back we are going to where are my single ladies when we come back where's my <laughs> when we come back we're going to get to our conversation on stereotypes and today's black women right here with me start a quarrels on the dialogue real talk real people we'll be right back young connection your one-stop connection for all your graphic design and commercial printing needs. Young Connection is a full-service printing and media design company dedicated to providing the highest level of customer service and satisfaction. 
Young Connection provides swift response and rapid turnaround services for banners, brochures, business cards, letterheads, church bulletins, funeral programs, flyers, logo design, posters, and much, much more, all at an affordable price. Young Connection, the official printing company of LA Talk Live. Give them a call at 310-491-3336. That's 310-491-3336. Or visit their website at www.youngconnection.com. That's www.youngconnection.com. Young Connection Printing and Media Services, proud sponsors of LA Talk Live, where it's more than just talk. Do you have or know of someone with a child or adult family member with developmental disabilities that would benefit from a social recreation program in the South Los Angeles area? At Ability First's Harry A. Meyer Center at 8090 Crenshaw Boulevard in Inglewood, we offer afternoon and after-school care programs for children and adults with disabilities, which include socialization, recreation, community outings, independent living skill training, as well as physical fitness activities. You can reach us at 323-753-3101 and visit us at w- www.abilityfirst.org. Your past doesn't have to limit your potential, even for black male youth in the L.A. County probation system. This is actor Lorenz Tate. If our youth desire a better education and career now or in the future, then they deserve the support of the community, businesses, organizations, and individuals like you. Bloom is a new initiative in L.A. helping to provide opportunities and options that are limitless. Invest in L.A.'s black male youth today. Go to www.calfund.org slash bloom or like us at facebook.com slash bloom.cc. Back, welcome back to the dialogue, real talk, real people. I'm your host, Charlotte Quarles, and we're on live at latalklive.com. And we are <laughs> a little background music. <laughs> I love this song. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly, today we are talking about stereotypes and today's black women. This is a community conversation and a 90 minute special with a 30 minute uh, segment where we want to hear specifically from you on your comments or questions, not only about the dynamics of black relationships, but just the stereotypes of, of black women and how. Uh, they're impacting the growth and sustainability of not only our black relationships, but our black families and our black community. Today, our guests include filmmaker and producer Tim Alexander, who was here uh, for our show, I believe, on colorism. Was it on colorism? Song? He, was on one of show. he was on the second week of our show. Diary of a Tired Black Man and now Diary of a Tired Black Man Part 2. So Tim is going to be joining us shortly. Entrepreneur, community activist, and friend to the dialogue. Dallas Fowler, president of Dow Tech Global Solutions. Hello. Hello. Greetings. Greetings. Welcome back, Ladybug. Good to see you. (laughs) (laughs) We both sound better. Last time we were both hoarse. I was hoarse last week, and last time you was here, you were struggling for life, girl. 12 year old little boy. (laughs) Welcome back. Uh, Screenwriter, author, and sponsor of this series and tonight's show, uh, Monique Matthews, author of Sex Free, a not so modern approach to dating and relationships and also a screen uh writer and masters and director and director my uh uh youtube video called it looks just like you about uh, breast cancer awareness is nearing 200,000 uh, oh wow right all right excellent and it, uh, many people know amari hartwick okay and he got a start on that video so well, welcome. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to miss you, Mel, but thank you I for know, joining us. I know, I've been loving being here. <laughs> All good things. All good things. And last but certainly not least, a, a friend to uh, the dialogue. Matter of fact, uh, last time Michael was here, he got my co-host fired. <laughs> last time he was on the dialogue. Why do you always bring that up? <laughs> And it wasn't my fault. I it was wasn't a, your fault. I'm, I'm just, just saying. An innocent bystander. You were an innocent bystander. It just happened to be on that show. Michael Norville, director, producer, writer, mind, booty, and so how innocence transforms to prostitution. Welcome back, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Good. Thank you for coming back. So today's conversation, ladies and gentlemen, um, is on stereotypes and today's black women. So one of the things I want you guys to come up with is when you think about black women, what First three words top, uh, pop into your mind. When you think about black women, what do you think, Michael? Uh, diverse, smart, and sometimes too smart for their own. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. <laughs> Mo? Brilliant, nurturing, and loving. Okay. Dallas? Wow, I would say beautiful, 
powerful and loving. loving. You know, and, mother, all, and, and all mother. you guys were were I mean they were positive stereotypes. So what would you say? What would you think society would say when society uh, defines black women? And Dallas, I'm gonna start with you. What three words would you say society would say are stereotypes? Uh, are a stereotypical black woman. The typical stereotypes are, you know, angry, mm. attitude. Uh, what may be another typical Gold stereotype? digger. That wouldn't come to my mind. <laughs> that's not a natural <laughs> thing for me. But, but, you know, that could be one, okay. one stereotype. Okay, very good mode. Or the body, the shape. Ah, very shapely. shapely. Thick. Mm -hmm. Bootylicious. Mm -hmm. All of Booty that. Bootylicious. Yes. Licious. <laughs> Mo. I have angry, single, and gold digger. It oh. would be ratchet, but I don't think a lot of people, I think that word is still catching on. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the 90s word. So, Michael, what would you say? What would you say society, how would they uh, stereotypically define black women? Uh, I would definitely, they would say hypersex. Mm. You know, that they're, um, you know, that's an old age thing back in slavery where, you know, the slave master gave him privilege to, you know, rape the slave and he would call her hypersex. Mm. You know, that's still carried on today. The gold digger, you know, um, we see that a lot okay. in television and et cetera. And, you know, um, in some cases, you know, when we see black women on TV, they're always, you know, portraying them as kind of looking like white. So, mm. unfortunately. Oh, OK. All right. And Steve, let me get your voice in here. Let me get your opinion. When you what would you say? What would you think society would say are three stereotypical character traits or stereotypes of black women? I definitely would say angry. OK. Number one attitude, that whole neck roll, eye roll mm -hmm. thing. Um I would say hypersex too, just from the whole, you know, video thing, like booty shaking, the twerking phenomenon okay. on um, social media. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. Very good. So, who would you guys say is responsible for pe perpetuating these stereotypes, Mo? Who, who? I would say we all are. Okay. I think that, um, you know, certainly in terms of our initiation into this country, uh, there was a very purported move to make sure that black men and black women were not human. I mean, we're listed as three-fifths of a human being in the original constitution. So anything to dehumanize us, definitely, that that initial crime goes there. But in terms of crimes of identity, we perpetuate it all the time ourselves, and it's still perpetuated on us in the media and society. Michael, I see you shaking your head. Well, I'm just agreeing with her wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, the stereotypes are supposed to be reflective of how black people are in general. And I think when you look at black people, we are so diverse in, in character and men and women that you really can't just put like a box on and say, hey, this is the way to behave. So what perpetuates that is the media, of course, especially over the last 15 years. We keep seeing this one image over and over again. What's that image? Uh, well, we definitely see the image of hypersex. We see the loud image, um, especially the Tyler Perry movies. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I, that that woman was so annoying, and especially I got married, too. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to turn it off. You I want to turn all Tyler Perry movies off. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually enjoyed the first one. You know, it, okay. it actually got a, like a thumbs, uh, you know, 45-degree angle rating. But, okay. Um, anyway, so the, the media continues to perpetuate that particular one. And and I think another one that we don't really discuss is that the strong black woman, she's uh, portrayed as just being the super being that has no emotion, that has no humanity, mm. and that, you know, she can take it all. Okay. All right, Dallas. In terms of... Like, who's perpetuating? I mean, he said the media, of course, and Mo said, you know, we are perpetuating it ourselves. Yes, definitely media, um, but the roles that um, we choose to take, we are we have to take responsibility okay. for, for our, the roles that we choose to portray. But I think a lot of times there are a lot of good films and uh, TV sitcoms and things of that nature that don't get picked up by mm -hmm. uh, major networks because they don't portray us in the way that we are supposed to be perceived by uh, the rest of the general public. Who, who, when was an era in media when they did portray black women, would you say, somewhat accurately? Well, we did have the Cosby show. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. different world right yes. after that. Mo? Yeah, that you know, I, I want to go, I think there was a great article I read this morning, and it was about the ratchetness of Jewish American princesses. Mm. And so this guy said that uh, on the Daily Beast <laughs> that this is the worst show ever. There's a, a Jewish American princess mm -hmm. show currently mm -hmm. on, and he's like, it's the worst thing that has ever happened. And, of course, we can look at the autobiography of Desmond Pfeiffer that came on years ago on UPN mm -hmm. and all these other things. And I, I think that even within... 
uh, all the stereotypes, we shine through. We shone through in Claudine. I mean, we find a way to be authentic. It's just such a preponderance of all these um, other images. So even, you know, if I say the Cosby show, if I say a different world, there are other things I could say during that time because that's when I, th I believe BET mm -hmm. and music videos came on the rise and people were like, well, that's not realistic. And, and so I just think that within that, our voices might have been more, you know, uh, minute in the past, okay. but we always find a way to... To okay. be authentic. I, I, if I can chime in real quick, though, I think that's kind of the problem when we always have those negative images to be the roles portrayed on the screen and they humanize them because you like the character. You mm -hmm. like the person behind it. Mm -hmm. and it and it humanizes that and it, and it falls into that whole thing of keeping it real. Like if we don't portray that just because it's one element, then we're not being real. OK. All right. Very right. good. Well, and I would just. Or I, would ahead, just, I would just have to say that there are some of these people real they are real. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you may not have a Medea in your family, mm -hmm. but I know a few Medeas in your and, life. And I got a few cousins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but and it doesn't mean that they're loud and boisterous all the time. It does not mean that they're not educated. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it just sometimes when we get together, we tend to be loud. Okay. Uh, uh, people of other of all ethnicities tend to be loud when they come together. Okay. And I don't think that's anything that's any Thing that's so separate from the African American community versus the Latino or the the Caucasian community. But why do black women get tagged with "we're loud"? Here's what I will say: even with that, it's there are other images to counteract those other images. So, like for example, this Jewish American princess show. You see many shows where Jewish American women aren't portrayed in that way. Like they don't like that, but they could single that to one show. Or you could look at, you know, Jersey Shore and it's like, oh, these want to be Italians are that way. And it's not all Italians are that way. Right. But what happens with the Medeas and everything else is that that's the preponderance. Like that's the majority of what's seen. So there's that that I think yearning for diversity more than anything else. I think we do have diversity, though. I mean, we've had shows like Girlfriends, where you had four characters, four groups of, I mean, four a set of four women. One was an attorney, another one was in real estate, another one was, you know, finding herself and going through careers and had all these different degrees, and the other one was working, hardworking mom, single mom, and then uh, eventually came into her own and wrote a book or something like that. So I think there. Are, um, there are different images of us, mm -hmm. but the the bulk of what a lot of our younger generation picks up is from music videos, okay. and there's just well, things. Well, that let we me can't ask you this. Well, uh, wait, wait, let me let me get Michael because uh, yeah. I saw you make a reaction when she said uh, girlfriends. Well, first of all, I have to say that um, I, I don't think I don't agree with the diversity in today's world. I think over time we can see it, but when I think about girlfriends, um, when I remember when that show first came out, I, I was literally applaud because when I was a child, I had so many black women that made sure that I kept on the right path. And I can name like a plethora of black women. So black women to me were like the guide into where I am today. Absolutely. So when I saw those characters depicted, like, okay, you had one strong woman, but then you had a friend that's always a slouch. And then you had another friend that was always a gold digger. It was like these kind of like, you know, like crutches mm. in, in, in a certain regard that was completely opposite from the women who made sure that mm. I stayed on the path. It Excellent was like, point. you know, mm. I... I'll just, I know you need to move but on. Can but can I ask no, no, you this? Do you know that there, do, do you maybe, could you accept that there may have been some complexities to those women that you only saw them in one certain capacity and they may have looked at you as a child that needed rearing and pointing in terms of pointing in the right direction in terms of guidance, but they may have had their own different affiliations? Because I can, I, I mean, I have tons of sister friends and I know that they all fit into some of those different categories. Okay, Not well, let's, every well, let's talk about one, some of them. But I would have to well, say. Let's talk about some of them specifically. Now, uh, we all are on Facebook and we all get these things called memes. I just found out what they were technically called, but there are always these little <laughs> captions that Thank have little names and little called. meanings. So, so I've gotten some that that kind of depict the stereotypical um, stereotypes of, of black women. So I want to discuss some of them with you. So the first one is the strong black woman. And that's meme number one, Steve, strong black woman. And so the meme says, I am a strong black woman. She got her hand going like this, obviously. I'm a strong black woman who don't need no man. Okay, well, that was real popular, uh, I guess, you know, post-Vietnam, you know, going into the 80s, and it, it was serving a purpose. The purpose I feel it was serving, it was to separate the black man and the black woman. Mm -hmm. Because if you look, you know, 82% of the households that had children in the black, you know, family, 
they were married. Mm -hmm. 82%. This is 1964. You know, I was born in 65. So within 48 years, when we look at what happened after the crack era, then we have this huge separation. So we have right. welfare. You know, we had that whole pimp thing on the, the, the black exploitation era. And then, of course, we got crack cocaine. So by the time we get into the 80s, the black family is split. And part of that is, and I'm a strong woman and I don't need a man. And we can see today that how important it is to have a man to help mm -hmm. guide the, 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 the daughter and guide the son, especially in the manhood and the expectations expectations of what she be look what a woman should be looking for in a man. Excellent, excellent. Well, what do you think about the caption of the image? I think it comes from hurt. I think that as men and as women, we're very hurt, and it's much easier to say I don't need you than to say I miss you. I'm hurting. I don't but, know who I am. But specifically you. about the image, I mean, they have a the mm. the, the heavy set black woman with her lips curled up, look like she's cracking her neck, like Steve was talking about, rolling her neck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just the just the image. Do you know what I mean? Of that, not only just that statement. I mean, statement. that's 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 hurt. Mm -hmm. That's defiant hurt. Okay. Like I don't want to get hurt. You will not come near me. I mean, if anyone knows anything about bullying, not in terms of people getting killed or killing themselves because of bullies, but you know the old school yard bullies where you had to stand up. So I'm okay. going to stand up before you even attack me. Before okay, so, you hurt me, I'm going to let you know that you can. All right, so Dallas, let me go to the second meme and then I'm going to ask you about it. Uh, so it reads, men and women aren't built for gender equality. Men and women are built for gender compatibility. So what are your thoughts on black women being equals or seeing themselves as equals to black men? You think you're equal to a man? Heck yeah. In terms of, <laughs> absolutely. I think I have as much as to bring to the table as he does. Okay. But, and one doesn't work without the other. Okay. Um, I challenge you to try it without me. I challenge myself. I wouldn't even challenge myself and be so foolish to challenge myself to try to do it without you. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the last time I was on the show, I, I declared, no, I am Dallas Fowler and I need a man. Okay. I am not trying to do this alone. So I think, um, but in terms of, equality and compatibility we had societies that worked um that definitely um ancient societies that saw um the value in women and women had their own property and things there were more matriarchal societies mm -hmm. which matriarchal doesn't mean the woman was in control or in power it just means that there was an equal balance of gender mutuality but she was more domesticated though i mean a um, lot of these ones uh, they are entrepreneurial be working well we're now but we're still in a matri we're still in a patriarchal society okay very good more men are in control there are still men there's still very much an uh, issue in terms of equal work for equal pay um, women are still making um, 10 to 25 percent less for the same roles and jobs that men are. So um, it's not exactly equal playing okay. field. All right. So why did you automatically say that she said yes? That she would say yes? She thought that she was equal. Um, because um, you know we're we're all human beings, and both men and women. You know, I just look at like I said. You know, my mother's, her friends, and all the women that guided me. Um, they were very much nurturers and they were protectors at the same time because that was at almost the same time the men were leaving. So I was wholeheartedly agreeing like, yeah, okay. well, that, that's You think women question. are equal to men? Equal and in some cases beyond men, you know, but okay. that's the, that's mm -hmm. the dynamics. Mm -hmm. It's like in some cases men are, are, are better in some things, and I'm generalizing, of course, okay. than women. And when a, when a unique man gets together with a unique woman gets together, they're going to have characteristics where one is going to do some things better, the other wasn't going to do some other things better, and it's up for that couple in that unit to find out what works and how to utilize each other's resources and best. Do you think most black men think that way? That doesn't sound like most black Most men. people don't think that okay. way. Okay. All right, Mo. I don't think equal means the same. Okay. So one of the problems that I have as a woman in this society is that the discussion of women equal to men, it's like men and women are different. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to achieve power the same way a man is. I'm not going to be overly aggressive. I'm not going, in terms of the, I would say, the, the domination, I'm not going to be physically superior to mm -hmm. most men. Okay. So I'm not going to use brute force strength. So, and I think that when we say equal and in this patriarchal society that denies the female presence, the, the, the nurturing energy, we're taught that if we are not, um, you know, boisterous, if we're not aggressive, if we don't in some way show brute strength, which is the meme in number one, I mean, she's physically mm -hmm. that then we are less than we are inferior. And I really think we need to define what makes a woman strong. What okay. what what is that equality between men and women? Because the way it's defined now, we have so many young women. And I know, I, as I was growing into my own sense of womanhood, I had to reckon with, well, what makes me a woman? Do I? How do I achieve okay. success in this society? Okay. So some would say that you know, black women, it's their attitude. 
and that we have a negative attitude. So I want to go to, to the third uh, meme. Actually, you should be meme number three on your paper. So they have, and they have uh, four different uh, culturally diverse women. The white girls be like, hi. The Spanish girls be like, hola. The Asian girls be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> That's a stereotype so in itself, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I'm just going by what they're doing anyway. I'm just having fun with it. But you get the point. And the black girls be like, if this nigga, wait, if this nigga's looking at. Me. I niggas, think it's. Huh? I think it's WTF. Yeah, WTF. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I can't read it this good. WTF, this nigga looking at me. Mo. Yes. Attitudes, black women and their attitudes, especially. I mean, this is kind of like what Sean then was talking about on when, when colorism. And he talked about the others was and better. So, so the wrong. way these this this meme is stereotypically <laughs> describing, uh, you know, the attitudes of different cultures. Here's what I would say about that. The first time that uh, you and I discussed me being on for a month, and I knew today was going to be my last day, I thought about one of the seminal identifying lyrics that define who I was as a young woman and in relationships. A Fendi bag and a bad attitude. Mm. That's all I need to get me in a good mood, right? Right. And <laughs> a <laughs> round away girl, hello, J. Cool like, I was right. like, cold flip on it if you think your man is playing you. So even if I was just one, I was like, I'm supposed to flip. Like, he going he gonna to play on me if I don't flip on him. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to be real. Like, I, I had, had 1988 Mo the Rapper coming out. <laughs> But what I'm saying with that is, and you will hear men say, ooh, I like that sauciness. I like that sassiness. Okay. But there's there's a point where you turn it off. Okay. So I know for sure I bought into it. Okay. That was very defining you? for me. What about you, Dallas? I mean, I think the meme is just, I mean, beyond ridiculous because I don't know any Asian women that say, hey. hey. If anything, I know a lot of black women that say, hey. <laughs> okay, because I'm guilty of hey a few times or two, you know. But um, this is just so, um, it's very extreme. And I and I can, I can tell you just from women across the board, uh, it doesn't matter what the color of her skin is. Mm. If there is something that is happening that she is not standing for, she is not having, you will see her neck roll. I have seen white women neck roll okay. just as fast as I have seen a black woman's neck roll. Okay. So um, I, I think it's just these stereotypes are perpetuated more so by a masculine era that um, wants to use these stereotypes against women to keep them in a more docile um, perspective. Michael. I couldn't agree more. Okay. I do want to say with this though, and I, I like the panel, uh, in terms of men approaching women, do you find that it's easier to approach women I, of other races? I wanted than... to chime in because okay, I was going to okay. say that is my experience. Okay. I'm sorry. Like I do think that Absolutely, there's Absolutely that, that is my experience. So this, so this meme is, is true? Y not uh, for you. Exaggerated extreme, yeah, I, but... of course, I'm not going to make broad stereotypes like that, but I'm just saying in my anecdotal experience, that is what I would say. Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so before we go to commercial break, uh, Mike, I want to talk to you about uh, the next uh, meme is the, the new black Barbie, mm -hmm. which, you know, has always tripped me. I keep this picture in my phone just to just show random black people like, is this what we showing our kids? No. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. Uh, I mean, Michael, the images of black women. I mean, this is basically, you know, Barbie doll Beyonce. Well, it, it's even more deeper than that. Once it, it's the cleavage, you, the Fendi bag. She probably got a bad no, attitude. No, <laughs> she's not smiling. But, <laughs> right. But Do not talk. To has me. anybody seen that, that that Pepsi ad with the black woman, with the kind of like not blonde hair, but platinum hair? You, uh, Beyonce, maybe. Yeah, but <laughs> when you look at that, you don't think that that's Beyonce. Like, right. I had to really, somebody had to tell me, and I had to look up with my camera and zoom in and say, wow, that, that is Beyonce because it looks nothing like her. Mm -hmm. Even her body is all kind of, you know, airbrushed out. So when, when I look at this image and, you know, when we start getting into other topics later on with the weaves and the hairstyles, and, and in this case, she even have implants. Which I know, new, right? Which is a new sensation. You know, black women were getting implants to about 2000, something right. like that, when the whole little male magazine Right, right. So I, I'm really disturbed by this image. Dallas, would you give this Barbie to your baby, your absolutely, baby girl? Absolutely not. And I what is this telling our baby girls? It's uh, I mean, because Barbie is supposed to be a, a depiction of what you want to be, and you and you play house. And I, I do you don't know? know who this woman is. Right. Who is this woman? There's a whole lot of a whole Beyonce. lot of girls in high school who identify or who want to be I can't this Barbie even, doll. I mean, I have no thoughts around it. I'm frozen in this because I I haven't seen the image before. Callers, we want to hear from you three two three four seven three thirty one hundred. What do you think about this black Barbie doll? And just our conversation today on stereotypes and today's. 
uh, black women. Um, before we go to commercial break, and see if you're going to give me a two-minute countdown before we do. Before we go to commercial break, I just want to talk about uh, this, the natural hair in terms of images. I got two images I want to play back-to-back. -back. Uh, the first one reads, melanin, natural hair, and a non-augmented booty. My holy trinity. Is that your holy trinity, Michael? That and a sophisticated mind and some intuitive instincts. No, what about returning to the natural woman, the natural style? The next one, the biggest uh, uh, black woman's biggest hair problem is that they think they have. They, they think their hair is a problem. Well, I'd like to shout out Dr. Carrie Williams Dr. Carrie. That. That's a pretty awesome statement. I don't think that it, hair has always been a defining issue for, for, for black women. Okay. And you know what? I wear my hair straight. I wear my hair pressed. Right now it's twisted. And if you're far away, you think it's locks. Okay. I embrace all of my womanhood. Okay. Dallas. Um, I would have to agree with Mo. Um, I, I mean, and I grew up in a beauty salon. My mm -hmm. grandmother did hair for 40 years. Um, I did hair in college. I, I do my own hair now. I, and for me, I wear it the way it is because it's the easiest thing for me to comb it down and keep it pu keep it pushing. And I'm, 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 so, and, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, so, and my thought is, your your hair is not a problem. I love my hair. Okay. Um, when it's from it when it's blown out to when it's straightened. So. Okay. All right. That. So, Michael, uh, before we go to commercial break, um, and both you and Steve, so give me your thoughts. This is black man on weaves. What do you think about weaves versus natural hair? Do you like weaves? Do you like natural hair? I mean, you have dreads, so I'm just assuming that you know weaves might be a little bit problematic. But just tell me, what do you what what do you think about black women and this and 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 I, these I, weaves? I understand some of the dynamics, especially when people are working out and okay. they're really trying to get in shape and some things that they do with sweating. So you know, I'm not too judgmental. But my particular point is that I don't want a woman to wear pre predominantly weaves like that's all she wears like me and my girlfriend we just tease and we look at people we know and she's like oh she wear weave all the time I said no she doesn't mm -hmm. and then we'll go back and say and I'll go well yeah she's right so for me I, I, I like a woman that's really just more natural general okay. you know less makeup okay you know very um not too flamboyant with trying to show the curves in the body. And I would like a, you know, I like a variety of hairstyles too. So, okay. you know, if you can But women do that to get men's attraction. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, if that if that's all you know is a weed, okay. you know, then you don't know how to do anything with your own natural hair. And okay, let me get Steve. Men okay. are a lot easier than you think. Like, I've gotten men, it didn't matter how my hair was. It was about my swagger. But some, but well, some he's men. He's talking about him. But yeah, for he's Steve, talking about his. Steve recently thing. just is saying that you know your weaves is out for you. No, like you're no, done. I don't. I don't get down with that at all. I'm not cool with it. You know, it's not about processing the hair or trying to even be straight. If you straighten your own natural hair to get different textures and anything from locks to twists and braids, all of that. But that glued in or sewed in, planted on of either synthetic or someone else's actual hair. If you really think about, I mean, me. I, no offense, all. I know there's plenty of women that have them. I'm sorry. All right, but so, so take me to commercial break. Cool. Give me some music for commercial break. So we're going to take um, a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to, I believe, uh, Tim Alexander's here. We're going to bring Tim Alexander into the conversation on stereotypes in today's black women. So make sure you give us a call, 323-473-3100, 323-473-3100. We're going to turn with Michael Norville, our sponsor today, uh, Monique Matthews, my good friend Dallas Fowler, talking about stereotypes in today's black women. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to finish our conversation. Make sure you give us a call. Yeah. Okay, because I'm bad over that. Hey, how are you? I remember the early days of my business when I started with a personal computer, new business cards, and my line of credit was on plastic. Now things have changed and you have a real job creating business. Recently, I turned to my bank for a new loan and found out they couldn't meet my needs. I now realize that after the credit crisis, many financial institutions no longer have bankers with the necessary expertise to understand my business or have the ability to provide flexible credit solutions. You searched for a better solution from someone with financial knowledge of a big bank and common sense understanding. 
understanding of a small business. I found Michael Banner and the Los Angeles LDC, who solved my problem and exceeded my expectations. Now, when I have a credit or other financial need, my first call is to the Los Angeles LDC. They've earned my trust by providing the best credit solutions and advice at affordable rates and terms. Where do you go when the banks say no? Los Angeles LDC, a community development financial institution. On the web at LosAngelesLDC.com or by phone 800-366-1178. Loans made under a commercial finance lender's license from the California Department of Corporations. Interested in advertising your business, product, or service here on The Dialogue? Call 323-547-7748. The Dialogue will help you promote your business, increase your traffic, and bring in new clients through innovative and creative marketing packages, including affordable radio ad campaigns for small businesses. Find out more. Call 323-547-7748. That's 323-547-7748. Or go to www.thedialoguela.com. And now, back to The Dialogue. The Dialogue. With Starlet Quarles. Real talk. Real people. Welcome back. Welcome back to the dialogue. Real talk, real oh, people. Okay. I'm your host, Starter Coral. <laughs> we are on live at oh. LATalkLive.com <laughs> talking about stereotypes. Okay, and today's like Beth Dallas <laughs> dealing with her. her, her. <laughs> She's getting me together. She's getting me right. Okay. Oh, you, she get, as, as we're live on camera, it's all good. It's like, gotta make sure my sister shines it. over here. <laughs> we're, we're live in. So today we are talking about stereotypes in today's Black Women for our series, our two month series. Uh, the, the dynamics of black relationships. Our, our our final guest has joined us, Mr. Tim Alexander. Welcome, sir. Hi. Before I'm here. <laughs> before you, talk, you came in, we were talking about just the images of black women. And Dallas, during the commercial break, you were talking specifically about your hair. And I asked, I asked you because you do have long, beautiful, uh, natural hair. I checked uh, as well. It, 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 yeah. You say you talk. Women track check you. Yeah, women, men. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you, that was men. the first thing you said. Is that is that your real hair? I checked. <laughs> yes. I want to verify so everybody can know. Yes. It's good. Yes. Like I, said, <laughs> I think it's easy for for women to, to see that her hair is real. I mean, some weaves are good, but I mean, we can tell when when when. Oh my well, goodness. you guys are weave technicians. I'm gonna say, is it hard for men to tell? Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. I'm Sometimes we don't here. even want to. Sometimes we I can't believe, even. Sometimes you know? I can't tell, and I've done hair and weave, so it, it, sometimes the the technology is getting to. So, a but, new but level. you wanted to say something about just the whole hair issue. I was just gonna say because now um, it seems like the more natural, and when they say na- and see in my mind, you know, just because I don't have a perm or I don't even press my hair, I think, oh well, it's natural. But because it's not in its exact natural state when I wash I it, I would and say just my hair is natural. Dry. And I use some chemicals. And, yeah, right. <laughs> my hairdresser right. calls me Kizzy. She knows what's underneath yeah, there. Okay, what's really going <laughs> what's on? What's really going on? And so, on. I, um, it's almost like a new peer pressure of, uh, you know, how, because I like to pride myself. I mean, I don't go get acrylic nails mm-hmm. or anything like that. I like to pride myself on being more natural in terms of the products I use and things of that nature. But now with this, it's almost like a whole new force. And if I go fully, fully natural, I don't think I'll be able to get the type of business done that I need to get Could done. You, would, you, would you wear Afro? Would I wear Afro um, around my house? Yes, I do it frequently. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, I, I didn't, let me get your, your thoughts. Do you prefer a, a natural woman? or do, uh, How do you feel about the weaves and the braids and the, the hair extensions and black women in their hair? I like a natural woman. If there's stuff added on, it's such a turnoff to me. Okay. I mean, you know, straight up. If I see a woman with a tattoo, instant disqualifier for the really? most part. Really? What if it's discreetly hidden somewhere? You don't see it till the time is right. To what? me, there's something to <laughs> me. Now, I'm sure some of y'all are great, but to me, I don't like people that follow. I like people that are proud enough of who they are in their own skin where they don't need to adorn it and decorate it because I'm just not impressed. Okay. And I'm not one of those guys who looks at inks and says, wow, her ink is really sexy. Really? No, it's not. Not for me. Okay. And I like natural hair. And for the most part, when I see a woman, my first thing is, is her hair real? Does she not have tattoos? Okay, now we can start thinking about talking. And when you say natural hair, what do you mean by that? Uh, it grew out of her head. 
No, just no weave. Right. Okay. As long as it grew out of her head and every strand is attached to scalp with blood running through the base of it. What, 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 what <laughs> wow, about braids? Got a pretty do, you guys, do you guys consider braids, individual braids, weaves? Uh, if no. they're individual braids and they're her actual hair, they don't bother me. But if she just starts dangling and putting, making them this long, then, yeah, they do bother me. Okay. Does braids bother you? Not at all. But I think we should uh, – I want to piggyback on what Dallas said because there was a newscaster who was actually fired last year. You know, because she had natural hair because, you know, mm-hmm. somebody complained and, you know, said some derogatory things on the Internet. Yeah, and she responded about like a week later and they fired her for her prof- her professional response. So, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, black women, you know, in order to actually somewhat move up the corporate ladder to have their own business, they have to kind of, you know, appropriate themselves and and. and design themselves to be more pleasing to a white consumption audience. Okay. I right. actually miss the shorter haircuts, you know, from yesteryear when 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 women would take their hair and work with what they had. I mm-hmm. mean, I look at pictures of the seventies and black women had healthy hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And they don't realize they're breaking all the edges off with all these weeds and things they're doing to it, burning it out. And it's <laughs> right. like, yo, why don't you just leave it? I remember nice big fluffy foot full heads of hair in the seventies. Okay. All right. So so we, we've talked a little bit, you know, about these stereotypes of black women. Let's talk about just the role of the parents in, in, in the images and the in depictions of how black women see themselves today. So we're going to talk about the role of the father. Um, so how do fathers impact women and who they become today? Well, it gives them the example of what type of men they should be looking for, okay. um, especially if they, you know, have a very loving experience with, you know, the wife or, or, or the mother in that particular case, you know, there's so many images and there's so many things that young women are being confronted with these days that they it's good that they have something they grew up with to go, OK, you know what? This is the way my daddy treat me. And, you know, this is things I should be looking for when in a relationship. So, you know, and the type of women, um, you know, that I come in contact with, the ones that seem to have their heads straight on had some type of male example within the household. OK. And that last time you were here, you said you want a daddy's girl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I find that you almost. It's very, very difficult to find a balanced woman that did not have a strong male influence in her life. I found the women that have a father smile more. They have okay. a whole different demeanor. They're lighter. They don't dress overt. They have a tendency to be more natural. They're down to earth. And they actually appreciate men and really understand. Okay. And they actually know what a gender role is. They understand, okay, you're the man. And, you know, it's not that they're being subservient, but they understand that. You know, a man's a man and, and a woman's a woman, and this is how we dance around each okay. other. Okay, all right. So I'm going to play an excerpt. Uh, Oprah recently did a segment called uh, Daddyless Daughters oh, and yeah. uh, with Ayanna Van Zant. She opened the show with Ayanna Van Zant. So I'm going to play this excerpt um, from Daddyless Daughters on the role of the father by Ayanna Van Zant, and then I'm going to get you two ladies' uh, reaction to uh, this audio. So let's start with the role of a father in his daughter, daughter's life. For the son, the father models and demonstrates how to be. Yeah. For a girl, daddy teaches her how to be a non-sexual, intimate relationship with a man. You see, in, in the son's life, the father is there as a, as a role model and a demonstration. In a girl's life, daddy's there as a relationship. Mm. It's different. A daddy is very different than a father. And the pieces that he gives his daughter let her know how to be within herself as a woman. And also how to be with other men, because isn't it the first relationship that you have with a man? Yeah. And the way he treats your mother, the way he treats you, is how you model for yourself how a woman should be treated. How a woman should be treated and how a woman should behave, how a woman should interact in a non-sexual but intimate way Mm -hmm. with a male. When daddy leaves, he takes a piece of the daughter's soul with him. And that lacking, very often, we try to fill up in all sorts of ways. Now, okay, so Mo, yes. your, your your reaction to uh, Yellen's Van Zandt about the role of the father? Well, I would like to add, maybe she was talking quickly, but I do think that based upon what she is saying in my own experience, there's a role that the father provides, the daddy provides, and that role is protector. Okay. You know, when we look at the first meme, women feel like we need to protect ourselves because no one else is going to protect us. No one else is going to provide for us. And rather than being, you know, heartbroken, I can do this by myself. So I think I know that with my dad, I don't have to be extra tough, even though I just came from boxing, where I've been boxing for a year. My dad, I, I was, I did take one dope growing up because he liked it, like I was his only child. But I never had to worry about protecting myself. I always had my father to look for 
but those are things that I like. Mm -hmm. So I think that fathers are protectors. I think that the relationship, as she hinted to, between fathers and daughters, it really tells you, like, I can go out. And I remember being in college and so many of my friends actually kind of being scared to go out on dates because they thought if you went out on a date on a guy, he spent money on you, you had to sleep with him. Mm. But my father took me out weekly every Thursday. We had father-daughter dates. We went to Barnes & Noble's, went to a movie, and then we ate at my favorite Chinese restaurant on 86th Street and 3rd Avenue. And I knew we can go out, and it's the pleasure of my company that a man is going to really jive with. It's not me having sex with him. Okay. Right. Um, I'm, I'm my dad's oldest child. He didn't have a son until he's his fourth child, so wow. 13 years after me. So I definitely was the son, daughter, son, <laughs> <laughs> for the first 13 years, or well, for the first 10 years at least of uh, my life. And he, he was into martial arts, so he, he taught me that. So he taught me how to protect myself, but he was the protector. And I have to agree that that would be the additional thing that I was going to um, add in terms of what Eliana was saying. But I also like that she said a non-sexual relationship mm -hmm. with a man in terms of every relationship that you have with a man does not necessarily mean it's going to be okay. sexual. And you learn that very early on. Uh, but what I also have to say, what I learned from my dad, I love him very much, but but the way he treated me was not necessarily, you know, my parents separated early on, was not necessarily the same level of respect that he had for all of the other women that he may have Excellent dealt point. with mm -hmm. over time. That can be and very so, confusing. And it, it wasn't confusing to me because I would tell them, listen, w w you going to let him say that to you? I wouldn't mm -hmm. do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> and then he would laugh. He, we would joke with each other, like, why you say that to that lady, you okay. know? And so, but at the same time, um, Yes, um, the father's relationship, the, the the how you have a relationship with your father definitely shows how you have a relationship okay. down the line with men. But I had friends, and what I this is the last point I want to make. I had a I had a, a close friend that was in an abusive relationship, and her father had passed away, mm. and she uh, felt like. She said to me, I, he wouldn't treat me like this if my dad was still alive. Mm. And it's like, no, you have to make the choice. Not You had a dad. You know how you're supposed to be treated. Excellent. You have to make the choice not to be in that relationship. Excellent point. Okay, so I want to read this next meme, meme number seven, Steve. Uh, Steve and I want to get to, uh, you, uh, both you gentlemen's response. Um, we need to teach our daughters the difference between a man who flatters her and a man who compliments her, a man who spends money on her and a man who invests in her. A man who views her as property and a man who views her properly. A man who lusts after her and a man who loves her. A man who believes he is God's gift to a woman and a man who remembers a woman is God's gift to a man. And teach our sons to be that kind of man. Tim, I'm going to start with you. Um, so many things I can say about and that. And you have two sons. This, yeah. Are these the lessons you're going to teach your sons? Absolutely. Okay. That's absolutely right. You know, and um, it all how goes... do you teach your sons these lessons? How, how do you demonstrate this? How do, how do you teach this to black boys? Well, for one thing, I'm in a conundrum in the sense of I really need to get married. Okay. Because there's certain things I can't teach my sons if I don't have an active relationship in my in our life mm -hmm. for them to see how I treat a woman so they can model after that. Okay. And that's the problem that a lot of single mothers have because they don't have good quality men around, sometimes no men around, and they cannot teach their daughters how to deal with a man in the day-to-day -day relationship mm. in the right balance. Okay. And they cannot learn it just by having conversations. They have to see it. Okay. You know, All it's right. something that you experience. Michael. You don't you don't have kids, right? Uh, not that I know of. <laughs> so if you do, <laughs> what are you teaching your 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 daughters about their roles, and and how are you teaching your your son? How, well, what, what I'm you very inspired by this piece here. Excellent. It actually gives me some um you know ideas, and I'm gonna go home and cook with. Good. But, yeah, but the thing that I uh, really kind of struck out is the difference between spending money on on a woman and then investing in her. I love that you brought that out. Um, you know. That's a clear distinction because normally when you invest, you're, you're asking the, the, the person to bring out more of themselves. And it's almost a requirement. Um, you know, if, if they're an athlete, you know, hey, you got to do the practice. You know, this is a long term girl. Here's some of the things you need in order to execute your plan versus trying to flatter her with money and put these little dangling things in front of her to try to condition her behavior. Okay. And that's something that, you know, we all should be able to give that type of an example. But as I said, I'm motivated by this. I love this. Those are clear visual examples that I think can, you know, be fostered. And, out and in let the me piggyback world. on that. So, so what does it mean for a man to invest in you? 
that means for me, uh, a man understands what um, I'm interested in, what my talents are, and he helps me better develop them for a better us. Like okay. it's not just me for me sake, but I think that the relationship becomes when two people join together and there's a whole new partnership formed. So I think the investing is also in me as an individual, but then us as a relationship. Okay. What does it mean for a man to invest? Uh, I mean, I think they both just answered very well, but I would just say it's not dinner, ladies. Mm -hmm. It's not, <laughs> it's not dinner. It's not shoes. It's not a bag. That's not an investment in you or, you know, or your life. Um, it's whatever it is that your goals are. It's seeing it's, it's a man that will ask you what your long-term and short-term goals are. Not to be act like a lady, think like a man movie, but seriously, somebody who knows what you're trying to do down the line and then takes that and says, well, here's something that will help you. Here are some tools that will help you. Okay. And I've had to say that myself in men that I have dealt with. I'm not interested in someone who wants to just dangle uh, a few coins and okay. that does not okay. spark my interest. Before you shift, I just want to piggyback on that. If you're saying you're just talking in a general conversation with a man and mm -hmm. you're just like, you hear someone like Alicia Keys play the piano. It's like, oh my gosh, I wanted to do that. But mm -hmm. I had to babysit my sisters and brothers and never had a chance. And then a month later, you get a surprise where you get four piano lessons. Mm. That's an investment. That's okay. when you didn't right. even know. And he said, you know what? I, I just know that you wanted that as as a kid, and I'm going to help you fulfill that as a woman. Okay. So, let's, Tim, let me get you your thoughts on the role <laughs> of a mother. You think that's cupcake, huh? That's cupcake, huh? <laughs> you think that's... <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> oh, what, man. That was single. the end to a Judd Apatow movie right there. <laughs> but was me, it? <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Oh. Okay, so let's go to the role of the mother. And Steve played meme num uh, show meme number eight. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a caricature of a mother praying uh, with her two children. I mentioned this in the first uh, episode when we were here. Oh, is this a, mm -hmm, maybe you sent this to me? I don't know. And you see the the father clearly walking out of the house. So the mother says she's I, I don't need a man, and clearly she has attitude. Uh, the daughter I don't want a man, and the young son I don't want to be a man. Tim, what do you think when you when you get this graphic? When you, you know, see this graphic, the Bible says if you want friends to show yourself friendly. Hmm. And if women want men. They have to show themselves to be a woman and stop trying to take the male's energy and say what you don't need. But what specifically about the lesson the mother's giving the child? Well, the lesson the mother's giving the child is the daughter is going to have no regard for men. And it's exactly what's going on in the world today. And the boy will have no clue how to be a man okay. because as that man leaves and the mother tries to do some bizarre dual role as both the mother and the father in her mind uh, – that boy can't look at her and say, I'm going to be you when I grow up. Okay. It's just, that's just not the right – that's not a man. Okay. And so we have gender confusion. We have attitude confusion. You know, And I'm now talking to a lot of men, and they're agreeing. They're saying that if a woman doesn't have a good relationship with her father – or a stepfather or a male figure. I'm not even going to talk to her. Okay. They're right. finally saying I'm done. Caller, hold on. We still got you. Michael, uh, let me just get your thoughts on the role of the mother, and then we're going to go to the caller. Well, the role of the mother is, you know, in the, in the black community, she's very diverse and very dynamic, you know. Uh, you know, she's sometimes a breadwinner and sometimes a nurturer. I think that the problem that in my generation is that a lot of black women were, um, they brought in the bacon and, and they had the tough balance to, you know, they had to enforce the rules. And at the same time, it was hard to have that nurturing balance. Okay. And so I think that was one of the issues that, you know, my generation dealt okay, with. Okay. So, see, do we still have a caller? Yes. Hi, caller. You're on with the dialogue. You have a comment or question for our guest? Well, actually, um, I, I just wanted to com I'm sorry? compliment the guest, the, oh. the guest on how profound their statements are. And it gives great balance to the, the, the ongoing debate. I, I do have to state that there are quite a few women out there that have the balance and are able to raise very strong, very dynamic young men. Mm. I, I don't think that's spoken to enough. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much, caller, uh, for your, your comments. So I want to play a quick audio um, from Mo Ivory, who was recently on CNN, and she was uh, uh, they were having a conversation. Uh, Federica Woodfield was having a conversation about the uh, statement that Obama uh, made about Trayvon Martin and um, a very personal and profound statement. And Federica asked Mo Ivory, what lesson did she teach her daughter? What did she teach her daughter about what happened uh, with the Trayvon uh, Martin incident? So we're going to play this audio from Mo Irene, and then I'm going to get you guys' feedback on the lesson she's teaching her daughter 
uh, if she was in the same situation with Trayvon Martin. So let's start with the role of a father in his daughter, daughter's wrong, life. Wrong audio. But let me say this about having a 15-year-old daughter. Um, she is Rachel Gentel. And, and in the way of she could have been on the phone with Trayvon that night, she will be on the phone with a young black man or in the car with him or stopped by the police walking down the street one day. It could happen to her. So my conversation is, listen, we have to understand the laws, and I try to explain them to her. You have to be alert of your surroundings and your environment, and then you have to be supportive of the man that you're with. If you are with a black man and something is going on, you may be the one that diffuses the situation. You may be the one that brings the calm so that he can handle the situation better. Maybe the police will handle the situation better. I was just in Washington, D.C. on Saturday, and I had to do that. I was walking down the street and a, a couple of friends of mine were agitated because a bus hit their car and I saw it escalating. And then I saw the police coming over and I thought to myself, they're going to get arrested just because of how angry they are. Mm -hmm. So I went over and I just diffused the situation a little bit and I told them how proud I was of them to, to handle themselves so well. And that allowed them to go home that afternoon without you know, being arrested yeah. or having any altercation. So that's the message that I'm trying to teach my daughter that mm -hmm. you have to live by a certain standard right now that is pre present in our society and how to handle it the best way. So Dallas, what do you think about Mo Ivory's advice to her 15-year-old daughter about how to react in a situation with a black man if the police are harassing him, if he comes into a situation of conflict? Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I think she's absolutely right. I mean, that what did your just, father teach you? Did he did he talk to you about any type of scenario? Like if you're with a black man, how do you deal with the situation? You the know police what? are harassing him or you know what? No, actually, we never really had that type of dialogue. But we had this when we talked. We did talk about this with the um, whole uh, light skin versus mm -hmm. dark skin mm -hmm. conversation that we had. My father's fair. Um, and I don't think he has encountered to that degree of some of the other men in passing sometimes i mistake uh latino men or indie native american men for my dad okay um at the same time he i know he had instances on the job in the workplace where things like that could happen um but i would just say and from my own personal encounters of hanging out with friends as a teenager or as a young adult um having to be that that voice of calm mm -hmm. and reason and saying okay whoa 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 we need to just chill let them do what they okay they're stopping they're they're asking us some questions chill answer the question tell them who we are and then i say you know what we're here we're back visiting from school we're home for the holidays thank you very much and then okay these are at, these are college students this is probably not the people we okay. need to be dealing with and then you know the situation is diffused so. what about mo what about you you know, I'm so happy that uh, Mo Ivory mentioned Rachel Gentile because uh, one of the things that as I was watching the trial and just, you know, thinking about Rachel and where relationships are now, one of the things that immediately captivated me about Trayvon Martin's case is that he was missing for three days. He had been in a morgue, I believe, for three days and his parents had called as a missing person and they had to know that in that complex there was a young black male killed. and his body was just laying there and Rachel was on the phone with him. However, she clearly didn't have the, the number to his home. Mm -hmm. And we live in a generation now where everyone has their own individual cell phone numbers. And it would have been nice if I would tell my daughter, I would, and for my children, I want them, whoever they're talking to after a certain time, they have to be able to call the home. I know we don't deal with home phones a lot, but that simple returning to it is may just be like eating Sunday dinner together, okay. where it's like a lot of the days of missing Trayvon would have been alleviated had she been able to say, I was on the phone with him. I don't know what happened to him. This guy was there. So one thing I would say is make sure if you and your friend are that close that you have his home number, you can know his mother and his mother know you. Okay. Um, I would also add as a black woman that it's the attitude thing. Like when Rachel was um, talking, we're taught as black women I understood exactly what she was doing. I don't like what you're going to do. I don't like what you're doing. I don't like that you're trying to make me sound stupid. And I'm going to let you know that I'm not down with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. As black, we're taught to, I'm going to let you know. And in and, and certain situations, there's something, there's more information that needs to get out rather than I'm just not going to let you know. So as to what Dallas is saying, if you're in an uncomfortable situation and you know this person is treating you as less than human, you don't have to body language say you're treating me like less than human. But we we encourage that. So this isn't against Rachel. This is the the culture that encourages us to say, 
I don't know who you think you're talking to. And I teach college students, and I know I get the attitude. Okay. All right, Tim, what do you think about the the, the, the conversation Mo Ivory had with her daughter about diffusing a situation uh, when uh, with black men approached by law enforcement? You know, it's very important to teach our children that there's a right time to stand up for yourself and there's a time to stand down. A lot can be alleviated. If I was Trayvon Martin walking home, I would have made it home with no problem. I wouldn't have been shot. You know, there's a lot that we need to do. Sometimes you have to assess the situation and say, you know what? I'm just going to go over here. We're not going to do this. And just, you know, don't get roped But in. what specifically would you tell your daughter if she was walking with Trayvon Martin home and Zimmerman approached them and this whole, you know, altercation happened while she was there with him? What would you have instructed her how to react in that type of situation? The best reaction she could have had would be to stand back and quietly watch and be a witness and not get involved okay. because there's nothing that she can do. Mm -hmm. But she can be a credible witness for whatever does happen. And somebody needs to stand back and be that objective, as objective as possible, but, credible witness. But, Michael, if you look at some of these reality shows, you get some of these women fighting each other. And, they're, you know, some of these black women may jump in the fight and start fighting Zimmerman, too. I mean, we're yeah. just... Well, had I mean, to follow do you know what I'm saying? So some of these girls, I mean, they don't know how to stand down. They don't know how to be the I calm. Said something. I think the yeah, common I denominator I is... I they don't know how to be the, 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 the calm in the storm. But I they, would have said something. Okay. I, I, been I, think, yeah, I think the common yeah. denominator, you know, especially on those type of, diver I mean, really heavy circumstances, is how do we process our emotions when things are happening so okay. fast? I think that's an exercise that both men and women need to to develop because that's something that in my line of work when we're dealing with deadlines and how to you know solve problems in a certain period of time is like how do I just take my emotions out of it and just concentrate on what I'm trying to execute and that's a hard thing to do especially if you're like 17 18 20 mm -hmm. yeah. you know so uh, that'd be a good thing to you know to have a class yeah. about you know, I've been in a lot of sticky situations, and what I do is I just step back and step out of myself okay. and say it's not that serious. What's my objective here? Is my objective here to get on with this person, or is my objective here to go home unscathed? And you just have to step out of yourself and don't get roped in. Okay. Now, yeah, before but, we go, but, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. I want to say we don't know <laughs> if Trayvon attempted to do that. I just want to make that crystal clear. This guy was following him in a car and then got out the car following him somewhere, and he may have felt at that point he's cornered or not wanting to take the guy to his house. The guy's on his heels, obviously. Okay. So I, I don't want to make this about Trayvon. This yeah. is about stereotypes it's and black again women. about women. I just women know responded. how I was raised culturally. Okay. It was, I was from Harlem, and you don't take no shorts from nobody. Well, okay. From all right. All right. So before we go to commercial break, <laughs> let me get let me get the two men's reaction to this last meme, meme number nine, Steve. Um, a man with dreams. A man with dream needs a woman with vision. Her perspective, faith, and support will change his reality. If she doesn't challenge you, then she's no good for you. Men who want to stay ordinary will tell you not to have expectations of them. Men who want to be great will expect you to push them, pray with them, and invest with them. Now we're talking about women investing in men. Tim, uh, what, what do you do, women and, and our support and, and, and helping men be their better selves? It's very important to have a woman who sees you as someone important to her. And your best interest is her best interest. Yes, she needs to motivate. She may need to give you a, you know, a nice push, you know, when necessary. And what does also, it mean for a black woman to push you? You know, motivation. Say, hey, hey, baby, let's do this. You know, I'll do this with you. I'll stay up all night here. What do you need me to do? Let, just jump in like a, a, a working partner and say, let's do this. This, this, if this affects you, it affects me. Okay. What does it mean for a black woman to push you? Well, I'll give an example of what happened last week. I had a very big shoot in Vegas, you know, um, and um, before I left, my woman gave me like, you know, four little flashcards. She folded them up and she said, you know, open this when you get there. Open this when you wake up the next morning. Open this when you have your first break. And so, you know, I was dealing with some very many challenges that mm -hmm. first morning. I mean, everything that went wrong went wrong. And to ha open these cards and to read them and just to realize that somebody, even though she was like 300 miles away from me, was there with me right now mm -hmm. and, and gave me some guidance while I needed there in real time to deal with my circumstances. And that was incredibly uplifting and unified me. And it just brought the whole situation with me and her together. OK, so real quickly, ladies, what does it mean for you to invest in a man? I do want to say when we come back, we might have to talk about this a little more because I think this could actually be dangerous. It seems like it's great. But a woman with vision, if it's just to support that man and she doesn't have a vision of her own, it can be really dangerous in terms of who she okay, is. Okay, excellent. And I would just say, at what point is there a line? Because some of these things are wifely duties, mm. and they are not girlfriend can't duties. can't be given wifely Ooh. benefits. Okay, so that, I would rank. say we might want to come back to okay, that. Okay, so we're going to talk about a woman and her And defined challenge. It's
We're going to talk about all okay, that when we come back <laughs> from our commercial I love break. the diverse gonna, ideas here. We're going to take a quick commercial break. A quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about these challenges and pushing black men and the role of black women. We're talking about stereotypes in today's black women on The Dialogue. We'll be right back. Are you tired of getting sick and tired? Are you tired of doctors not knowing what's wrong with you? D Herbs may have the answer. D Herbs, number one in herbal remedies. D Herbs' main goal is to enlighten and properly educate people to the importance of human health and nutrition. D Herbs, home of the full body cleanse. Everyone needs to cleanse. If you eat meat and dairy products, you need to cleanse. If you're eating processed foods, you need to cleanse. 90% of today's diseases that we suffer from are diet related. Cleansing opens the door to healing and rejuvenation. Whether you need help with a chronic disease, weight loss, or to jumpstart and eliminate fatigue, D Herbs Full Body Cleanse can help. There's a better way to live and healthier way to live. Experience healing. Visit us at dherbs.com. That's D H E R B S.com. Or call us at 866 434 3727. That's 866 434 3727. Interested in advertising your business, product, or service here on the dialogue? Call 323-547-7748. The Dialogue will help you promote your business, increase your traffic, and bring in new clients through innovative and creative marketing packages, including affordable radio ad campaigns for small businesses. Find out more. Call 323-547-7748. That's 323-547-7748. Or go to www.thedialoguela.com. And now... Back to The Dialogue. The Dialogue. With Starlet Quarles. Real talk. Real people. Welcome back. Welcome back to The Dialogue. Real talk. Real people. We're having actual real dialogue. Actually live right now. As I'm talking. Wait a second. Hey, we on live. Hey. Do my introduction. Bring us back. Bring us back. Bring us back. Okay. All right. Well, well, let's, you know, let's invite the whole entire dialogue audience into the conversation. Talking about stereotypes and today's uh, black women. But before we get on you guys' conversation, Dallas, I want to jump to you because uh, uh, Dallas, both of you and uh, Mo, uh, you questioned vision and you questioned what did you say? Well, just about this quote. Wifely benefits. Just wifely benefits. Benefits and and investment. Okay. And, investment. and there's a Thank and you. there's a line at some at some point. Where is that um, line? Um and that's a question that some I mean, I think people will have to define for themselves. Okay. But I would just say um, I, for any person that's a real genuine friend, I hope that they would challenge me. Okay. Um, whether you're a, a boyfriend, girlfriend, love interest or not. Um, but at the same token, um, when, when I read this into, and when I read the fine print here, <laughs> uh, you know, they want you to push them, pray with them, invest in them. I think that's wonderful. I'll do that with you, um, as a friend, but the level of investment, you know, I've seen, I've had friends go, you know, far, oh baby, you need some new tires, you need mm-hmm. some new rims, you need this, you need that. Um, I think there's a line, Excellent. you know, and you have to say, okay, some of these things that you want from me in terms of a daily meal or in terms of all these other things should there should be a line there because now you, these are things that a wife would do for you. And at okay. what point, if you're getting it for free, at what point will you ever invest in me? You said women's vision. Well, yeah. I mean, there's more than one way to why should you buy, buy the cow when you get the, get milk, the milk for free. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's right. more than just sex. It's about support as well. Um, and I did, I, I, I had a really close friend and I had to tell him like, baby, I love you. I, I think that we're great friends, but I'm not investing in you. And some of the women is going to get your name. It's mm-hmm. like, so and reap at the what benefits. point where right. we're, 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 we're right. talking about moving to the next level? Okay. So I will help you, but you know, when it's like, are we moving really as a team, as a unified source, or are you still hemming and hawing and you don't know? Well, okay. I'll help you a little bit, but if you hemming and hawing, hawing and you don't know, then I'm gonna step back a little bit. Okay. But, but, what but, if but you have boy? to get wait, wait, some wait, previews, wait. right? Wait, 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 wait. wait well, I think naturally, if I'm if I love you, I'm gonna invest in you. At some point, though, I need to know that we're moving in a in a similar direction. So preview. 
But it's not what you're saying that in terms of a preview. I'm not saying buy this movie. I'm saying I love you. And just based upon what you're saying, I want to invest in, and see this grow further. That's not a preview. A preview is the whole movie happening. And I'm just giving you a sample of it. What I'm saying is. Wow, that was very, very deep. Let me let me uh, clarify my question. OK, you're going to he's going to have to develop some type of innate feel for what type of woman you are as far as how nurturing, how mm -hmm. caring and supportive you really are. You can't just say all of that happens once we get married. That's I what never I said that. You, no, I, I didn't say you said yeah, it. I, never I said asked that. a question. There, I asked no, a but question generally questions are based upon leading. So the fact that I didn't understand what you were saying, I, I didn't get it. Yeah, I just I was asking for clarity, <laughs> and not, I didn't not, get it. Not an objection. Okay, so now that we got it, so if I could so have some, just some it. one okay. quick peaceful interjection into that, I would just I would just say you get a preview by watching me work. Mm. You see how I am with my family. You see me go the extra mile with you in some instances, but at some point you have to. Pause for the cause and say, listen, I think all of this is wonderful. I, you know, I've been supportive of you in the past, but you have to understand at this point in time, me doing X, Y, Z and A, B, C and D equate to all of the duties that I would do for okay. someone if I was. Michael, I saw okay. you shaking your you. head. I got okay. you. Michael, I saw you shaking your head. No, I, I'm just, I, I just love to just hear the different views. I'm not okay. really making a judgment okay. one way or another. And I never got to my point on vision in terms of a, a woman with vision. I think that a woman would be great for a man who has a dream that she has a vision for how to make that happen but if a woman is without a vision for herself and her whole vision becomes how she makes his dream a reality i think that that is dangerous and it can Very. leave her in a position specifically if they're not evenly yoked if they're not committed to being a couple and growing together it could leave her at a lesser place okay and i'm gonna and, ask my producers how smacking on the mic please the line. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you. that was something that it disidentified with me. I'm reading this and I didn't get the distinction that when they said a woman with vision was just the vision based upon the, the man executing his goals and plan. Okay. You know, I I took it as a woman with vision is her vision is mm. all encompasses of her vision, the child's vision, okay, very good. you know, his vision. It's a group vision. I never got the individual vision. Okay. You know, what's really I great agree. about that is that as women, when we become submerged within somebody we really become submerged so it's not like we start multitasking my vision you have to really make yourself see the mm -hmm. family's vision because i can get so caught up in everything you're doing that i'm not even focused on what i'm doing well, one Tim. thing women have to first assess whether they're sowing their seeds and their efforts and all their assistance on fertile ground mm. Mm -hmm. you know when you meet a man if a woman meets me it's not going to take her any time at all to figure out if i have intentions or not okay because if I'm interested in a woman, I'm moving in a linear direction to try to get someplace. I'm too old just for a girlfriend. So if you're investing time in somebody who just wants to be around and eat your food and lay up and rub your booty, <laughs> and he's not expressing any intentions, then you know don't try to impress him with all the stuff you can do if he hasn't even shown what his intentions are. Okay, all right. So yeah. let's just save all that energy. All right. Well, I think I to get to that point, you have to know Good that, point. which is why what it's you not said, hard Dallas, for a man to figure out what a woman's wife hard material for a and woman if he to wants say, to be a husband. Okay. Many women aren't taught. This is what you look for if you look well, for a strong relationship. When, when, when do, when do we no, know you that? just said it. You I, didn't teach them anything. I, you just I, said that. No, you didn't. That's not teaching. But you know, do we have teaching is through example. Everything that people say have to be a fight. No, I'm clarifying what you're saying. You know what? There's a lot of bras going on with you. Come on, let's. We have. Oh, see, there you go. You don't really There's understand the ovarios. So let me tell you something about the ovaries. Okay. Because what you <laughs> say is Your ovaries right masculine now must tent. be at that time. But anyway. See, there you go again. There I go again. You can't oh, dismiss but, me why like not, that. Not, why are you going to say that? Not, because, because he's trying to dismiss me. Are you trying to say that you're being hormonal All right you're now? saying, and I've done my research on you, sir. When, when, so I know you're sexist. And it leaps out. And you have this nice little way that you seem... Like oh, we're in sexist. enjoyment. There are men and there are women. There are two sexes, and I'm one of the sexes, and I know I'm a man. So if you want to call that sexist, yes, I do believe that gender roles have provided. Sex and gender are different. Gender roles. Can we go a little further into that? Yeah, let him go. I, I, this is great. Well, you know, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Genitalia <laughs> denotes your gender, and there are certain differences that are physiological, psychological you know, hormonal that are tied to our genitals. Well, we actually do function different and men are men and women are women. And now we're blurring into this kind of mush where men aren't man enough. Men's testosterone is at an all time low now. There's a lot of estrogen in the food supply and women are getting more masculine. And right now we're not companions anymore. We're turning into competitors. Hmm. 
that, who can one up who, who can dominate, who can tell the other one what you can't tell me, and you don't this and you don't. I'm not interested in competing with a woman. So if you want to call me a sexist, hell yeah, I'm a sexist. Mm. I believe in my gender. Okay. I'm a man. My gender and sex. Michael, are you believe different. in your gender? I well, no, no, no. I, 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 I have to. I have to. <laughs> gender say and sex. Sex is physiological. Gender is social. Well, you said sexist. So I did say you were sexist. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, and I like you sex. Said I'm that a sexist. Okay, Michael, let me Let's get move on. <laughs> Michael, okay. let me get your thoughts. What are you gonna say? <laughs> well, one thing I did want to piggyback on what Tim said. Um, you know, I noticed there's a lot of um relationships that I've had in the past or friendships that try to go in a relationship where there is this competition of who's going to be, you know, the CEO of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And that type of stuff, you know, when you're battling and you're doing these type of things, you're having discussions and argument, it's like you get into this point of view where my point of view is the only thing that matters right now. And if you don't got, go about the point of view that I see, then it's not going to work. Okay. So I think that that's one of the defeating things in relationships where we're always competing about who's going to be number one instead of like figuring out how can we be a unit. We, we don't understand teamwork anymore, mm, you know, okay. and, and I think and I'm going to say this might sound sexist. I think men with sports and competitors and women are getting into it out understand a little bit more about teamwork just by the way they were raised in sports that women didn't have as much. Okay. So, Michael, I want to spend a little time with you because last time uh, Tim was here, we talked about uh, his movie Diary of Tired Black Men 1 and 2. But your movie, uh, your documentary that you, you've you you've um, completed, Mind, Booty, and Soul, How Innocence Transforms to Prostitution. So tell us a little bit about your film and what, what inspired you uh, to focus why this particular title mind booty and soul well i mean come on let's look what's been going on for the past 14 years you know the booty has been the dynamic uh kind of like thing that women are using to get attention it's been discussed in all kind of topics it's being used to sell all kind of items so if i'm going to talk about you know black sexuality in today's world if you don't have the word booty in it mm. then it's like you're kind of like selling out to what took place over the last 14 years and so i've had a discussion with maybe you should take it out because the and people get the wrong idea. That could be true, but that kind of identifies it. So what inspired me is that, you know, when I first got started, I was really discussing like the curvaceous shape and why isn't being represented and that, you know, I'm getting tired of these little wafy skinny images and these girls, these white girls and these saying they bad. I'm like, no, no, Holly Berry's not fine to me. But, you know, mm -hmm. anyways, I wanted to see a more dynamic representation of beauty. So that's what started it. And then I'm on um, doing the comedy thing and I'm interviewing these three girls and I'm starting to hear their stories. So it became a little bit more than uh, something physical and or just something that I'm attracted to and I want to discuss that and I'm over here scratching my head and I'm like man this is some three dimensional stuff this is more than just some booty because the original uh, the original um, title was uh, Black Ass Syndrome and so Black Ass Syndrome Black Ass Syndrome <laughs> okay. that, was, that was the original title <laughs> Okay. because you know I thought we had a syndrome because it started I'm looking at like why am I I'm so fascinated by a woman's booty so anyways did you ever figure it out uh, I, I did, I did. <laughs> why are you fascinated why are black men fascinated with the booty it's what is God it about intended. the booty well, I mean, you is know, God intended for yes. men to be fascinated with the booty? Yeah, yeah. There's, it, 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 there's it some shows, men who are fascinated with other men's booty too. It, it shows that she procreates. That you know, it goes back to that that time wow. where if 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 we, if we were barren and we didn't have any food, you know, wow. the woman has the capacity in in her fat and her booty to actually there's nourish food the kid. In her booty? Yeah, yeah. Well, the fat <laughs> in her booty. I if mean, she didn't if she didn't have the daily um, nutrients, if she was somewhere in Africa, the actual fat in her body would actually, you know, when she breastfeeds, would give the child nutrients. Mm. When you fast and you're not eating food, your body's actually processing the fat. That's how come we, we just heard that commercial, right? Mm. You know, because your body is processing that for energy and then you get skinny. So that extra fat in the booty gives a woman an advantage. So historically, when black men see that, they see a fertile woman who can be procreative to my kids. Okay. Visually. Uh, yeah, I, I want to piggyback because, you know, you asked a question, I did comment on it. But no, studies have been done, and I hate when people say they, but I think we've all seen them where they talk about some of the things that uh, exemplify fertility and that men find attractive when they do these studies. And it is hip to waist ratio. I mean, and then yes. in the face, there's some symmetry and stuff like that. But the hip to waist ratio, and it's not just black men, it's over his history. If you look at art and uh, sculpture and figures and all of that, that's why I say it says God intended to be when it's that rampant uh, globally throughout cultures and time. Then I just think that's what we're attracted to okay. and we're intended now, to now, be attracted to. When we were talking to. about your film before, we were I talking about how this, film. you know, there's this fascination now with, uh, uh, what's her name? Kim Kardashian's booty and all these non-black women who have, you know, big butts. And we've been having big butts for years. And we were talking about the, the, the slave. Uh, 
And, well, you know, what, there's a section. The woman. That, there's a section in the film that's called the appropriation of the black female body. You know, you see the black female body just you know plastered everywhere, but she's not black. You know, and the only time that, you know, the curvaceous body is really celebrated in, in, in media is when it's somebody on, you know, European type of style, like i.e. Kim Kardashian, i.e. Jennifer Lopez. Mm -hmm. And so when you when you also take a look at the curvaceous body and it's placed upon a black woman, you know, society has a way of guiding that type of image into a highly hypersexual being. Like if you see a black woman and she has curves, she's automatically highly sexual. And so that's kind of predefined historically. And we're seeing that over and over again today. And where it comes from historically is Venus, hot, excuse me, where hot it comes tight. historically is Venus hot and tight. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if, for those that don't understand, you know, 17 century. She was brought over from Africa. Sarah She's, Bartman. Sarah Bartman. Thank right, you. Right. And uh, she was put on display, and you know, in London. And you know, they say she's going to make all this money, you know, and she's going to be famous. And so she was put on display, and she was ridiculed. She was sexualized. She was put on display because she had a big butt. Uh, a highly big butt. Okay. With the curve ratio, with the mm -hmm. waist to hip ratio, um, and so. When we see black women somewhat put on display today in the music videos and being highly sexual, it's kind of relating to that same type of imagery that we saw, or excuse me, that history that took place in the 17th century. So, again, when we talk about the appropriation of black female body, it's like who's benefiting from these curves? Who, not the black woman or not the black race, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you get these individuals. <laughs> Tell Nicki Minaj that. <laughs> She's benefiting from her oh, body. Oh, uh, okay. Well, mm. and there's a lot of black women. I mean, and I lot. actually saw his film. Um, he had a screening a couple weeks ago or something like About that. About six weeks ago, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, it was it was really good. Um, but I think he had a dialogue that took place thereafter. I think a lot of the men probably enjoyed it. For me, I, I said it was sensory overload. Um, it was too I much was, booty. It was too much. It, it was, was a lot too of much it booty. was a lot of booty. It was a lot. Um, <laughs> well, he got his. He drove his point home um, uh, very well in terms of. Do they have twerking in it. Everything that we do with our behinds, <laughs> he had. Oh my god! It was there. It's there. You know, it, it was there. That, that, that's great so feedback. How, so how do people respond? I mean, you hear Dallas's response. So well, do the men like it because well, it is, is it like well, a, a strip show? I mean, what? I mean. It, it, there's that visual, and a lot of the visuals. I mean, men are see. visually stimulated, so I can see why you would well, be like, okay. I mean, from the title, I didn't know what I was coming to see, but from the title, I thought it was more kind of from a relationship standpoint, and men in relationships with women, and how sometimes a booty could just mean a multiple of things, okay. but um, the actual, it was actually more in, in a documentary format, okay. and it did it showed all of the the images that of the we, booty of the booty and we kind of talked about how that we could have showed more of the the um contrast to that with in terms of the the w black women in power or that have portrayed nothing but positive roles you know the okay. angela bassett's the michelle well Obama's, thank you for that so how can people find out more about your film or you just go to my website mindbootyandsoul.tv mindbootyandsoul.com you know and in the screening i got great feedback and yeah. so i'm actually you know taking that feedback back and putting it in the lab and you know this summer's about going out and and actually Listening to what I heard, and one of the things that I heard from black women is, you know, the strong black woman who didn't buy into sexualizing her body, that voice wasn't really represented. Okay. That's what I was getting the feedback within that film. And how do I represent that voice when I'm clearly trying to show that this is not the right path that I think we should go about? So, you know, that's part of the process. And okay. so I'm not going to actually reveal how I plan to doing that. But what I will say is that, you know, I understand it and I want to get that message out. Okay. You know, but at the same time, you know, without any defenses, you know, I was really trying to overload you with the imagery because that's what I see on a daily basis. I can't get away. I can't get away from it. As a black man, that's what you see? I can't get away from it. You know what? I call it being ocularly molested. Ocularly molested. Ocular molestation. You cannot walk down the street and mind your business and I see something walk by that no matter how much you don't want to, is sitting there and it's like, I didn't, I wasn't I trying to see that. Women have that problem. Well, well now it's not. Women well, don't, unless we're not you got a guy with his penis I don't know, women someplace. have that problem. Oh. We're, I don't think we're awkwardly similar. You, you see a big booty, be like, boy, I don't. 
<laughs> well, I mean, you may say, oh, women have okay. more stuff they can show, and they show it a little bit different. Guys' clothes are baggy, so you can't see anything. Women's clothes are way not too today. tight. Not yeah, no, I, no, I, I can today. see a nice little booty on a man. Don't, don't get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> you got x ray vision. <laughs> you know what? I do want to say something draws. that Michael said. <laughs> okay. I mean, I didn't really understand the attraction for the booty, but to understand like the breasts or whatever, it's like there's clearly this procreation attached, this nurturing attached to that. But your whole thing of that is a part of procreating too and fertility, that that's that makes sense Excellent. to me. Excellent. Well, thank you for enlightening our guests our, on, on our panel as well as our Well, I've been enlightened today. You know, I'm glad I recorded it. <laughs> I, I would also I would also kind of talk about um, the impact, the negative impact of the implants because now there's women of all races and walks of life walking around with it, whether they bought it or they injected it or they grew it. Um, it's just like the end thing to have now, but there's some negative impacts with that. We see the videos with the girls with the, some one butt went down mm -hmm. and the other one, oh, you know, Lord. it's, yeah. It's the, well, did you hear about the girl who gave herself her own, her own butt injection? She died. She lost her limbs. And she lost her limbs, like both yeah. her arms and her legs or something. Or crazy she, like she lost her limbs. Uh, trying to do something crazy. Okay, what can so we do about that, Dallas? We not can stop squats. injecting our bodies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, Why? you're not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But we have a whole young culture of 18-year-old girls to 25 who think if I get them to look at me sexually, they're going to want me. We had, like, conscious songs. I remember when TLC had this whole video about um, I'm Pretty, mm -hmm. and they talked about doing um, uh, getting breast implants and things of that nature and how you just you didn't have to do that to be beautiful you have to define beauty for yourself there's mm -hmm. always someone who is going to see you and i mean on the days that i think oh man i'm looking a hot mess is when some guy comes up hey can I your you number it's like really? and it's like what did you see that's true that's true I mean, <laughs> we, I mean, right. we see you when you're most we want to see at the most un <laughs> inopportune time, and, that's when you meet somebody. Exactly. Absolutely. We're not prepared I mean, to. Absolutely. A, a quality man is going to see the sexuality in a woman from a completely different set of criteria. Mm. To me, the sexiest a woman can be is in a, a, is in a skirt that goes below her knee. Oh, really? Nice calves. You know, nice fitted skirt. You can just see the curves. And to me, that's sexy because it leaves something you to like the You like the woman in the mother's board? I like women who look like women. They have a certain <laughs> femininity. And really, their, their womanhood is not overt. It's something for me. It's okay. something where right. when All you right. see the whole package, you realize, wow, and I get that too. Okay. Well, but, okay, real well, quick. Well, for two things, you know, I, first I want to uh, piggyback on what something was said is about how do we steer our women away from that? Mm. And that's yeah. definitely a path that I'm taking in the film. I want to show the outcome of you take A, B, C, and this is going to lead to D. And in most cases, it's going to lead to, you know, pornography, prostitution. I was going to say, because your tagline is how innocence transforms to prostitution. Innocence meaning they were born with this nicely shaped, but, but then they get prostituted by whom? Well, the, the media, first of all, is, is conditioning our young girls. We're going for like 12 or 13 years. So a girl who was like 10 years old is 23. And she's been conditioned that, you know, her value in society is to present herself as a sexual commodity to men. Okay. And that also that she can benefit and, you know, and have this kind of like sexual power over men and, you know, actually, you know, economy wise, build up her esteem and at the same time have this kind of freedom. And it's a false sense of freedom. It's okay. a false sense of empowerment. That's the word I was looking okay. for. Okay. So we're coming down to the, the final couple of minutes of our, our ninety minute special. And I just want to access to the ladies. We didn't get a chance to talk to, about all of our different stereotypes of black women. But one in particular that I want to talk about is hateration amongst black women mm -hmm. and lack of support. I've gotten I mean people you know tend to acknowledge that a lot of my shows are geared towards black men or talk about black men issues or that you know, I support black men. I said, you know why I support black men? Because black men support me. Do you know what I mean? I've had more mm -hmm. black men help me in my career mm -hmm. and open up doors for me and have <laughs> access for me. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes white We're men. We're going to talk I'm about the definition of sexist. <laughs> but no, I know. Like, that's my girl. I know what I'm talking about. And she <laughs> know what I'm talking about, too. Sexy starlet. That's I know another show. Well. That's another show. But besides that, <laughs> love but, jazzy. But, I know very well. Talk about y'all should have your own show. Right? <laughs> <laughs> y'all be good, <laughs> <laughs> they really would. But real quick, I mean, just talk about this hateration from black women and not being able to be happy or for one another or not checking them enough when women are out of line or, you know what I mean? So, the, the you know, the lack of support, even opening doors for us. I mean, there have been some women, I mean, Dallas, you know, we've been in some of these professional organizations and dealt with the drama and the politics of not wanting to have a succession plan or right. not wanting to pass the baton. So talk about women just hating on women, period. 
okay it, it's 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 real it, it's it's what Starla just said is very real it happens and sometimes they put some of the the younger women through what they feel is this whole I won't right to pass rights of passage right. process um do you have this 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 but do you did you have this 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 mm-hmm. and this and but at the same token I think just in friendships in general um I don't know why we do this to each other but I think every woman is probably guilty at some point absolutely of either being envious of something and it's like well if she got this promotion it was like I wasn't going to be a promotion and mm. uh, be able to be promoted and we don't even work at the same job mm. so why can't you be happy <laughs> for your friend that got a promotion or if she tells you oh I just got this new client be happy celebrate with her and and say she just got this new client sometimes it's just easier to kind of get in this fun actually who had a really good Oprah had a life class about women in relationships with other women and that was the thing that we do and we have to get over that and start supporting and be happy when something good happens to your friend. Okay, Mo. I, I want to say when you first, I did like this when I first started because Dallas a couple of days ago had a status update. We became Facebook friends oh, after yeah. here about embracing female friends and embracing new friends. And I just wanted to open oh, up yeah. with that is um, there's an article I sent you star about the shine theory. I don't know if you're familiar with it. This woman in New York magazine, I'll send it to you afterwards yeah. and to all of you, but women, Men are, in terms of how we achieve power, and if a woman sees another woman who's beautiful and smart, we can be really intimidated, right? And one of the answers to that is to go and befriend that person. Mm. And that's the shine theory. If you're shining, I can shine too, and I deal with, oh my gosh, she's shining. Does this mean my shine is lessening? No, I'm going to go over and befriend her and see what she's doing, and then we can all shine together. So it's a great it, article. Right. I love right. it. So, Michael, real quickly, how can that. people find Thank you? you. Uh, again, go to mindbootyandsoul.tv, mindbootyandsoul.com, you know, um, info at thirdi4d.com. Mo, thank you so much for being here and being Hey, I want to say, if anyone wants to see me, I will be at uh, the UCLA Black Alumni Association is sponsoring a Take Back the Village in Lamert Park on Sunday. I'll be there speaking at 2 p.m., for my book, Sex Free and Not So Modern Approach to Dating and Relationships, and for anyone who is actually wants to be a self-published author. So this Excellent. Sunday the 28th, right? Dallas, how can people find you? Um, you can find me Facebook, facebook.com forward slash D Fowler, D-F-O-W-L-E-R. I'm on Twitter, Yo Dallas. Uh, Sometimes I add people to my Instagram, <laughs> Yo Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also daltechglobal.com, www.daltek. Tim, how can people find you? Uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Tim Alexander LA, the city I'm in. And uh, I'm also uh, working on my second film, third film, Diary of a Tired Black Man 2, now even more Italian. And when is he coming out? I'm trying to get it out probably uh, early next year. Okay. And Steve, if you can show the picture of my parents um, as I'm talking. So thank you all so much for joining us, Mo. Thank you for being our sponsor uh, for this uh, entire month of July, even though you won't be joining us next week for our conversation on black male, I mean, black fathers and their children. So thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, I have a picture of my parents. Hopefully, uh, today is their anniversary, 47 years. That is their prom picture from Jefferson High School. So my parents have been together actually for over 50 years, but today they celebrate their 47th wedding anniversary. So happy anniversary, Mommy and Daddy. I love you very much. Uh, Tune in next week. We're going to continue our conversation with black men and their children. We're going to have an all-black male panel right here on the Dialogue Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Start a quarrel signing off as my mama's child and my daddy's baby girl. Until next week. All right. Beautiful. You're not going to have any women here to say what it's like to be the mother and the father? Come on.